Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and in front of us is something which we're all familiar with. Uh, you can instantly recognize it from its round keyway, and of course it's very distinctive key. This is a Chinese disc detainer uh, lock, and this is a very bad and quite cheap cutaway of one. I won't go into massive detail about how they work, but essentially the key is cut to certain angles which allow discs to be rotated to a certain degree like this the discs align with a cutout on the alternative side which with the right key allows a sidebar to drop in freeing up the core to turn you'll also notice in nearly all of these cheap Chinese locks this disc here is always the one to press against the core essentially acting as the uh, the tensioning disc in the lock sometimes it's the one at the rear but most of the time it's the one at the front so there you go and you can see essentially the replication of the key bitting here with these little uh, nipples or nubbins on these discs okay so that's how it works now if you want to pick one of those of course you don't have many options for about five dollars five pounds you can pick one of these up from your favorite Chinese Emporium. And this is a disc detainer pick. The idea is just like the part of the key which engages with the first disc, which is this bit here, you have a tensioning tip which engages with that first disc. And you can see that there, just about, you can see that it turns just the first disc, acts as a tensioner. And then you can move the um, tip up and down the lock and you can engage with the uh, individual discs and you see some of those moving here like that. Uh, then there's nothing in the market, nothing at all in the market really and get, until you get to superb custom tools like the Silver Bullet by uh, Matt Hux, Huxley Pig, um, he goes by a number of names, who makes just superb tools albeit handcrafted and naturally, whilst good value, expensive to most people. So there isn't much in the market. You can't really improve these too much because they're not heavily customizable, um, apart from the odd small customizations which people like Bosnian Bill have already covered in massive detail. So cutting a slot in the tip of the tensioner to get past some of the disc profiling that some manufacturers do and of course thinning down the tip so that you can pick some of the disc detainers with more densely packed disc packs then you can see that I've filed mine down quite considerably um, on both angles here so yeah you can make some improvements but that's really about it so what do you do? Where where else can you, you go from these cheap disattainer picks um, or and you know up to those very cool but very expensive custom picks? Well, the lock picking lawyer and Bosnian Bill have come up with a solution which I shall link to. Um, nearly everybody watching this will have seen this already, their disattainer pick, and it's fabulous and I really hope it comes to market. I want one. But enter stage left check this out from my friend Boris from Israel. This is, of course, a 3D printed disc detainer pick. And because it's uh, 3D printed, that means that you can modify this, you can add whatever uh, modifications you, you wish to it, you can print it out, you can print a, a new uh, copy of it, a, a new version of it, if you break it, you can just make a new one. It has loads of advantages. One thing you'll notice instantly is just a large size increase. Naturally, PLA and ABS plastic, they're not quite as strong and they don't pertain to be. Uh, so you do tend to need slightly larger dimensions. That being said, it's a lot more comfortable to hold and to use and I think it conveys feedback extremely well. I think in this case, this extra size of this is an advantage. But what absolute genius there is behind this prototype 3D printed disc detainer pick. Absolutely brilliant. I think before we go into how this is actually put together and how I 
think it might be improved, I think what we'll do is we'll cut away to me using it in a plastic cutaway or see-through disattainer lock so you can see how it actually works in practice. Okay, so I hope this is a good angle for you. What you can see here is the disc pack and you can just see in through this clear lock to the disc pack. Here's the pick and I'm going to first of all align it so that the pick tip and the tension forks are aligned together and these tension forks will go into the lock. You'll see that they're tapered so they shouldn't go too deep in so they shouldn't tension disc one and two but if you force it it will. Uh, so just got to be a bit careful. I'm going to put that in. There we go. And then of course turn it and we should find that yep hopefully you can see that disc one is now binding. I can hold it like this to tension it and then go down the disc pack just trying to find any binding discs. Uh huh. Okay, we're on disc. Um, I guess that's three. Ah, oh, on disc uh, two now. That's picked. What's this? This is disc oh, five, I think. Disc four, nice little click actually. That felt good. Slipped off a disc there. Disc six was binding. Disc, no, well, disc eight, I think, seven. Oh, that was disc six. Five. And I think we've got it. There we go. It's picked. You can see the, the whole core turn. So, yeah, it just feels to me like um, a good quality disc detainer pick. It works really, really well. So, let's now have a look at the pick itself and how it was assembled from its constituent parts and how we might suggest some improvements to it. So, before we look at how this works, I just want to say that I absolutely love this. I don't just love it because it's a brilliant bit of thinking and uh, it shows Boris's genius. It does those things, but I love it because it works. It's a really good practical design. It's everything that 3D printing technology should be. It's, it allows uh, you know the, the building, customization, modif modification, and sort of modular aspects that the technology really affords you and it produces something which is just so well genius I have to say just really good love it now let's just pop this to one side up here as a point of reference then I can show you its constituent parts so the first 3d printed part is the I guess the bit which you turn the picking tip with clearly trying to put a piece of metal on here and screw it in is quite difficult but it's okay Boris has provided me with some nuts and grub screws and the nuts slide down here grub screw engages and then what you can do is a grub screw can tension and screw against the wire that forms the end of the picking tip up here. So you see this is actually the bit which you screw the picking tip into, allowing it to move separately to the rest of the pick. Now the tension tip is the second part and you can see that this has a wider hole and a bigger hole at the bottom. Why? Well, because running all the way through this is a piece of tubular stainless. So that would go up through, uh, well, I'll put it in through the top here. It'd run down here like that, sort of acting as a depth stop uh, to a degree. And that would run down the middle. 
Why? Well, we'll come on to that in a minute. Then you have the tip. This is sort of the last 3D printed piece. So we have the handle, the tensioning part with all the gradient markings to show you where all discs are, and then the tip. And the tip itself, you can see, engages down here. And you'll also see that you have some holes which align. And that's because there are more slots for more nuts, which of course, there you go. So you see the nut at the top here, and you see nuts at the side. These actually push against two elements, which are the tensioning forks and this inner piece of tubular steel. A tubular steel has a couple of, I guess, uses. It can act as a bit of a depth stop for the top. It also acts as a strengthening agent, but uh, more importantly, it acts as a way to have the tensioning tip made out of an ejector pin slide up and down it and through it. If it is rubbing directly against plastic, that wouldn't last very long and provide particularly poor feedback. So it has a structural element and it has a, a, a practical purpose as far as guiding the uh, picking tip along it. So you can see here, this is a full ejector pin. It has to be cut down to size because it's way longer than um, the actual tool itself. And the tip here has to be ground to a picking tip. So you can see how this all would fit together. Down here is the hole. This ejector pin would go actually engage with the hole down here. If I can get that in, there we go. And then what would happen is that you would use a grub screw to tension the picking tip to the handle. At the other end, of course, you actually need these tensioning forks. And to do that, Boris has just opted for, and this brilliant uh, idea, is some thicker, I think it's three mil wiper blade, which just inserts into the tip as well. You can file it and grind it to your specification, and then that will provide these tensioning forks at the front. Is there anything I would improve? Well, in terms of the overall size, I actually think the size is a bit of a bonus. It conveys feedback very well. It's easy to sort of use and grip. And because of the precision 3D printing, uh, it just works really, really nicely. I, I've got no complaints with it whatsoever, actually. But this tip is quite broad. And because it's quite broad, it does mean that if you had a deeper set keyway, so you can see that all of these cheap Chinese ones, the keyway is within a few millimeters of the top. But if you had something like um, a, a kryptonite or an on guard or something like that, uh, say bike lock, then the keyways themselves are very deep. So deep in fact that these cheap Chinese picks, uh, they even this, about centimeter depth isn't long enough to go down into the keyway to tension the first disc. Because of the broad nature of this tip here, that would be the same for this pick. But is there a way around it? Yes, I think there is. So, and I might experiment with this uh, one that I've got a little bit, just see if I can just see if I can make it work. Because if we extend this tip out, sorry, this is a piece of metal tubing out, still providing the structural element it needs all the way down for the ejector pin picking tip to extend. What we could do is we could move these tension tips in a little bit closer. There's a tiny, tiny gap between the tube and the tensioner. We can move that to touch this, and in fact, we could even file down uh, the edges of the tube just to extend down about this far into the tip so that they can press together very closely. And I think that that would then together 
provide enough depth that you could extend this metal piece out and the tensioning tips even deeper. So imagine that what I'd do is that I'd cut the tension tip off here, allowing all of this extra depth to reach into deeper keyways. So, I mean, I need to experiment with that, but I think that if, like I said, I file the uh, sides of this piece of metal tubing flat, move these closer, and then screw that very tight together, I should find that I can get good tension on very deep set keyways, or at least that's the principle. And that is the beauty of these 3D printed tools. If you don't like something or you want to modify it, then you just go back to your model, adjust it, and print, some, print another part off. Absolutely brilliant. So there you go. This is Boris's 3D printed disc detainer pick prototype. And hopefully, just like me, you'll think it is an absolute work of genius and has a ton of potential. Um, I can't wait to experiment with this sort of spare uh, parts that he sent to me because, yeah, I, I just want to see if I can uh, make a tip using what he sent me that can reach a bit deeper into some of the deeper keyways. So, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Boris. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time.